Estamos con la senadora Xochitl Galvez, eh, aspirante a la presidencia de México el año próximo. Candidata We're here with Senator Xochitl Galvez, candidate for presidency of Mexico in the coming year. Thanks for being here in our offices. So we're going to see how this election is going to present itself in the coming year. And I'd like to start by asking you, the polls say there's a difference between 9 and 17 points in favor of Claudia Scheinbaum. So what do you plan to do about that? ¿Cómo piensa recortar esa ventaja? Well, she's been in campaigning for three years. She has all the public resources at her disposal, or she had them. I saw hundreds of trucks in the different states, uh, uh, hundreds of uh, publicity boards, and she has her main uh, campaign promoter, the president of the republic, since the morning, with an enormous uh, media publicity. But I have faced more than this throughout my life. Uh, the biggest uh, the difference is going to be when the campaign uh, starts. In Hidalgo, when I tried to be a governor, I started with six, seven points, and I ended up with more than 40 points. And here uh, in City Hall, I started uh, with, uh, with uh, less than 25 uh, points, and then I ended up. So I'm a candidate who knows to work from the bottom, who knows how to fight, who never gives up. Uh, I have always fought against everything and everyone, uh, so it's never been easy, and that's interesting. Senator, you're proposing changes in the election of the coming year, but most Mexicans like what the president's doing. So is this an election on change or continuity? I think that one thing is that you like the president, but when you go into details, people are not happy with the insecurity. Uh, if, there's, if there's something I managed to notice all over the country was the brutal violence, how organized crime has permeated in the chicken, lemon, and... Uh, uh, avocado business, there's extortion. I was in Chiapas for many years. I worked very hard in Chiapas. Uh, I had to end trachoma. There was trachoma in Chiapas when I was a civil servant along with Fulio Frank and we eliminated that and I see a poor Chiapas now but uh, there's violence, there's human trafficking, there's narco trafficking, there's conflict in the communities. That was not happening before. In Cajeme people cannot go out. Uh, in the same in Tijuana, Tihuacan, apparently people are calm and if you ask, uh, uh, the president is going to say, say yeah, but, uh, but people are angry. There is anger. Ma ma mothers uh, who uh, disappeared, sons are angry. Migrants are angry because they had to go look for opportunities because there's no economic growth in the country. The problem of the president is that he conforms himself with mediocrity. When he says that the refinery is uh, finished, I say, my God, how can he say it's finished when there's, sti there's still a lot of uh, uh, tests to be done? It doesn't even refine one half a liter of uh, fuel. Uh, he builds utopias and he's selling them, but people are starting now to believe. Now, concerning security, there are several presidents who have not been able to solve that problem. How do you propose to solve that? First, not to give excuses. This president is always accusing everybody else. I'm not going to. I'm not going to say it's because Calderón or AMLO left me a country. I'm conscious of the country that is uh, being uh, left to me. But the first thing is we need is an intelligent strategy. So hugs and no bullets is a criminal occurrence. So 165,000 people have been uh, murdered. That's the brutal uh, balance. Uh, it's worse than the 100,000 of Calderón, worse than the 150,000 of Enrique Peña Nieto. This has been the most violent term. We gave the National Guard, we gave him everything he asked for, we gave him the resources he asked for, and he did not uh, stand by his uh, promise of bringing back uh, peace and calm to the country. So we need to be intelligent and work with our heart. How is it possible that he hasn't gone to visit the mothers of Lagos de Moreno? The, the, the way those uh, young people got killed, we had never seen that before in this country, and we need uh, to, to be firm. And women, in this case, I have this, uh, I'm firm. Do you like the policy in Salvador? 
I think it's an extreme. Uh, I think you can be firm but while respecting human rights because there's a combination. Of course, there's no comparison between El Salvador and Mexico as uh, countries, but we need to bid uh, to uh, improve uh, the police. States like Yucatan, who are doing it, is the safest state. State like Puebla, which is doing this, is one also one of the safest states. So local police can be... Uh, uh, can be a referent. Uh, Mexico City has a uh, strong uh, police force. It needs to be smarter. We need to work with the United States. That's clear. We need to do a frontal work, direct work with them, uh, it, uh, transparent work. Uh, 107,000 people died uh, due to fentanyl and other synthetic drugs in the United States. That means that for Mexico, we're sending drugs, but from them, they're sending money and, and weapons. So let's stop a accusing each other. Uh, you send drugs, I send money, you're the responsible one. Uh, gentlemen, we're going to be, be serious and uh, make a strategy that will benefit both countries because that's affecting uh, many other countries. There are dead people here, but also there. So uh, I think I would like to work uh, as, uh, in an agreement on security uh, with the United States. Why keep uh, go going around the subject? Of course, uh, the precursor come from China, uh, Asia, and India. They come through the Mexican borders. There's corruption because there's a lot of money. Of course they come. Of course they come. Th those are the dumb things that we cannot keep saying. That's the happy world of the president of the republic. No, the, it doesn't come here. So where does it come to and how does it arrive to the United States? I think that the United States also needs to assume its responsibilities. The money is coming from there to here. Again, back to the campaign. If Marcelo Ibrarad becomes a candidate, as he has been mentioned for a third party, is that good or bad for you? I think that for me it won't be either good or bad. I, the truth is that uh, I'm not going to see what other people left me. I'm going to see what I can conquer with new ideas. Really, they do not represent the left. Uh, as a left strategy that bids on uh, fossil fuels is laughable. I represent the dreams of justice, social justice, and I have with a, a mixed uh, party, but we can uh, go to uh, put in the center people indigenous people, the women, the mothers, we can put in the center uh, migrants. That's what really motivates me to be here. Do you consider yourself a left-wing person? I consider myself a center-left person. I have not been an activist for any uh, p political party. I'm a citizen that was captured by the uh, talent uh, hunters. In, the, in my youth, I uh, was an activist for the left, but in the end, I think there are positive things in the different agendas, whether you are right or left. Uh, this has to do with uh, economic growth uh, uh, and the redistribution of richness. It has to be with rights uh, for LGBT people, uh, plus their, uh, their uh, human rights, uh, uh, full respect for the rights, respect for uh, women human rights. Uh, so I think that in the end I can represent uh, that economic development. I'm an entrepreneur, uh, and that's what my friends from the left were telling me, you're a bourgeois because you're an entrepreneur. Yes, but I was the one who motivated the reform so that domestic workers in these countries would have uh, social uh, protection. I also motivated the reform so that uh, virtual workers have a social security. So I think that I am a person who generates a richness, but who is also very conscious that that richness needs to be redistributed so there's a more equal countries. What would you do? Because we talk a lot about the opportunity, but also about what's missing, an energy space, or lacking in the north. What would you concretely do in order to develop this opportunity so that it doesn't sound like a campaign promise? That it doesn't sound like a campaign uh, uh, promise. I'm going to tell you about my dream on nearshore. There are six things that need to be done immediately. One, we need to bid to the rule of law. Law, the law is the law. Uh, while the president does not respect the law and while we don't tell investors that in Mexico they can invest with confidence, they're not going to come. You came, you, you, 
you open uh, wind, wind plants and then you could not connect them because of the uh, uh, tantrums from the government to work with fossil fuels because they're stupid to bid on fossil fuels because on top of it being expensive, it's dirty. So given the potential that uh, Mexico has for renewable energies and green energy, uh, we need to make policy on clean energies. We need to solve the problem of water. Uh, in Monterrey, for instance, which would have an enormous uh, potential for nearshoring, there is no water. So we need to recapture water. And then you need the uh, the head of an engineer who understands the cycle of water. We need to bid on uh, uh, human capital. If we don't bid on human capital, uh, th that's why Tesla didn't uh, come to Chiapas. It's not that Chiapas, Tesla doesn't like Chiapas, it's that it requires a certain type of experts. And there's where the debate started with the president, because during a forum, during the book, fair, I said that young people on top of uh, giving them scholarships, we needed to teach them code, robotics, English, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, in order to have a skill so that nearshoring uh, companies can come. So technological uh, enterprises that can, uh, can come who are related to electromobility, robotics, AI, the spatial, the industry of uh, entertainment, the pharmaceutical industry. All these companies need a very specific expertise. So we need to work with uh, human capital. And also we need to uh, solve the problem of infrastructure. There's no capacity to transmit electric energy. Uh, what, uh, how is the potential useful if we cannot uh, uh, channels in order to transmit uh, this energy? And then there's a gas, for instance, in the southwest of Mexico and Central America, so that migration is contained. Uh, I think that within what the president said, the best is the, the train San Cispico. I, I, I think that we will keep that, but the international airport in Mexico City is a tragedy. Now they want to oblige the airlines to go to LIFA uh, by force because uh, people are not going, because there's not enough infrastructure. So that's going to be a subject that we will need to solve. Now concerning energy, what role do you see for the private sector? When there's no money, uh, the the private sector needs to invest. Who cares? Who produces the energy? What I care about is that it's the cleanest and cheapest. And uh, today, Sefren is not producing the cheapest energy. Today, the energy, if we had kept the energetic policy we had kept, it would cost 30% less. Why? Because renewable energy costs 600 pesos per megawatt. And this one costs 1,200 megawatts. And 200, 2,000 for, 200 for combustible that's why the numbers are in red. How can you keep giving money to Pemex, uh, $800 billion in subsidies? We have a very serious problem. The uh, state uh, companies are terrible to using the money of Mexicans and they are not productive. So I, I see the private sector and the people from Morena are not going to like it, but I want to defend the planet. For example, would you do the bid so that petrol companies explore this possibility? Yes, of course, the rounds that had passed, uh, 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 but, but the government had a certain success. Of course, so that a well produces, uh, it, it takes some years. The president said, oh, they went on the rounds, where's the, where's the oil? Well, there's prospection, there's exploration, there's production. It takes about five, six years. What do you do? You share a technology and risk. These uh, companies have a lot of technology that Pemex doesn't have. Uh, Pemex doesn't have money to explore. Also, oil is too valuable to burn it to uh, produce electricity. Oil should be used in the petrochemical industry, which is completely abandoned. To produce electricity, let's do it with renewable energies, with sun, solar energy, and hydrogen. The, uh, the theme of uh, hydrogen, which is the energy of the future, I, uh, that's why I was saying it would be a dream to have Emex instead of Pemex, uh, uh, Mexican energy. About Pemex, not only does it not have money, but it needs to repay more than $50 billion to foreign investors in the next government. What would you do if you become president? Are you going to sell part of Pemex? This needs to be studied. I wouldn't want to make that proposal out of the cup. 
without thinking about it. But I think that at least uh, concerning the the oil rounds, uh, if you don't have money to, to explore, if uh, private investment can help, it has to be done with very clear uh, rules. Uh, look at Petrobras, Brazil, they're doing well. Is Petrobras a model for, for Pemex? Yes, for me, Petrobras is a, is a good model. I don't understand why you hate, why the president hates uh, private uh, companies. They generate uh, uh, richness. If the president understands they, they need to pay their taxes. If the president uh, generated 30 percent, uh, for every uh, dollar, 30 uh, percent belongs to the government. If the country uh, has no economical growth, there are no, no taxes. That's why um, daycare, daycare centers had to close. That's why uh, 30,000 schools had to be closed. That's why the F infrastructure fund for the indigenous people had to had to be finished. So there was also the fund, uh, the catastrophe fund uh, for people with serious illnesses like cancer. While Dinamarca reduced uh, 15 days, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, uh, hope uh, for life. Mexico reduced it of uh, four years. Okay, we're not li like Dinamarca, but we need to dedicate more money uh, of the GDP, but uh, instead of giving it to Pemex. Now, you're for clean energy, so what would the role be for private companies? We need to come back to, uh, to the auctions. CFF bought uh, cheaper energy. Before Lopez Obrador, Things were working well. This needs to be kept. Uh, we changed the, the law of the electrical industries, which was the saddest day in my life, because it was decided to to use uh, uh, fossil fuels, which are more expensive because of the tantrum of the president, because the president does not understand the world. He didn't want to understand. He didn't want to study. He has a vision of uh, a very strange sovereignty uh, sovereignty idea. 70% of the gas comes from the states. Is that sovereignty? I want to be sovereign and produce. Uh, well, bye-bye, uh, Mr. Uh, president. Uh, uh, Goodbye to combustion energy. Good morning to electric gas. It is very. It was. This is a very stupid decision he made. We would be generating uh, green gas and producing money. Now talking about lack of money, the fiscal situation is not bad, but the next government is going to face growing demands on social plans that you think you already said you're not going to do away with. So where is this money going to come from? Is there going to be a fiscal reform? Or will rich people have to pay more? First of all, we need to spend money stupidly. This uh, government has spent 200 billion in uh, 200 billion. It has spent 280 more million in the train bag. It paid 300 uh, billion for an airport that we don't have. Uh, it has given Pemex 1.2 uh, billion pesos uh, that we'll never produce. Uh, so that's a lot of money that is going practically to the trash because due to bad uh, technical decisions. So first, money needs to be well spent before thinking about something else. Uh, if we spend money well and then still not enough, there are two ways. Some people say to, to take. Uh, uh, take money from the ones from the rich. Others say that we need to give more to the ones who have the least. I think it's a mix of both. The people who have mo more money need to pay more, but we also need to say what for. And and the people who have less money need to wish to advance. Uh, here, uh, Elsa was in Angel with me. Elsa picks trash in Puebla. Every day she wakes up at four in the morning to go look in the trash to pick uh, cardboard, uh, glass, uh, aluminum, and she earns 800 pesos a week. And with that, uh, she managed to give her sons a professional career. So there are Elsas all around the country. What they're looking for is an opportunity to advance. And for me, that opportunity is nearshoring. So let's make sure that Elsa's son can find a well-paid job. And so Elsa will have uh, 
come out uh, from uh, poverty, uh, from the lowest era of poverty, and probably she will go uh, to a better strata uh, with uh, her son. And her daughter is studying uh, graphic design. Uh, so there are thousands of Mexicans who want to advance. Uh, uh, I'm, I can make sure if there's a, a guy who, who knows uh, English uh, code with an antenna or a low uh, band uh, satellite, uh, which you find everywhere, there are 5,000 that have been installed. You can go to the farthest area in Mexico, bringing uh, education, virtual education, and virtual work. Uh, so I'm bringing a, a different uh, change. For me, it, it's a mix between uh, making rich people pay more, but also supporting uh, people who don't have. That was my case. Thanks to a scholarship, I managed to uh, to to stop uh, being a telephone worker, earning uh, 2,500 pesos. You mentioned that the airport in Mexico City has all these problems that were not solved. Which will be the proposal to solve them? Things need to be studied. You cannot come here to make a promise, a campaign promise, and say I'm going to do this or that. You need to know what it implies, how much it costs, what are the what the situation is. I'm a woman who likes to study uh, the different subjects and understand them, and then bring specific solutions according to the technical argumentation. You're going to find a woman who's an engineer and who always thinks like that. To bring back Texcoco, is that an option? Could be an option. We have to see if the trams are, are well uh, well finished and to see if uh, if airplanes can, can actually ramp the tarmac is still good. Uh, everything was wasted. The steel was stolen. There's a brutal corruption there. I made the analysis. There were thousands of tons of steel. Part of it ended up in the metro and another part ended up in somebody's pocket. The steel uh, of the airport is something that needs to be investigated. Um, the next government is going to receive these large projects. The airport in Mexico City, the refinery, this is going to require some money. Are you going to keep financing this if you become president, even if you did not like these projects? I said it very clearly. What works will continue. What is uh, what can be corrected will be corrected, and what is wrong uh, will be changed. So everything needs to be studied. Why did the refinery uh, uh, happen? Uh, imagine that you have a business plan with a refinery of uh, $8 billion uh, to, to be ended in 2022. And then what do you tell your board when you have already spent $18 billion and you and you don't know when the project will end. How much money have you lost? What is that for a business model? What we don't notice is that every day that we're late, we're not receiving resources. So we need to analyze why it went from eight to $18 billion. It's not that it went from eight to 10. No, it's uh, it increased by 150%. And everything indicates it's going to end up with 200,000 additional funds. Somebody's stealing the money. It's a locura. Alguien se está robando el dinero. Another characteristic of this project is the presence of the army, because building and managing, for instance, with the airports, what would your relationship be with the army? I like the uh, like army people. I have a brother who is a general in the army. I know them for many years, but that's not their role. I think that we need to start to uh, important to respect them. Uh, they they bring them back and forth as employees. They are there for the national security. The Secretariat of uh, Transportation and Communications needs to build what it needs to build. And if there are corrupted people, they need to be replaced by bright people. Corruption is, uh, is still present in the co customs, even if there are military. It's not about uh, putting uh, militaries. It, it is about changing processes. Uh, we need to apply blockchain to, to many processes in the government and make everything transparent. We don't know how much Santa Lucia costed, even though it's in the hands of the military. We know even less. 
So we need to bring back to the military to the role, and we need to respect them in their role. That needs to be part of the national security, but I don't see a national guard uh, with a military mandate. I see a national police with a civil mandate, well uh, skilled, and the army has other different faculties that have been established in the Constitution. Now, questions about international policy. You talked about an agreement with the United States on energy and security. What if Donald Trump became the president? What would be your strategy? Donald Trump would be very happy with me because he'd be facing a practical woman. What he worries about is immigration. Okay, so let's generate employment in Mexico in an intelligent manner. He's very worried about the migration of Central Americans. Today, Mexico, like the United States, has areas of full employment in Mexico. Data, labor data show that from last week, I think that there are 9.6 employment numbers uh, and uh, 6 point for people looking for employment. So there's more than 3 million uh, jobs that are, that are not taken yet. So we could make an agreement on an order, temporal migration. The Republican states, we need um, field workers. The Democrat states need uh, workers for the industry. We need to talk. To, it's, it's not, it's, I'm not going to send them. I'm going to do my thing, but you need people. Huh? Don't try to hide that. And those people are living illegally because while well, there is a market, uh, the, there's a demand, they're going to cross whatever the obstacles are. And uh, they, they're being paying $12,000. There's a mafia in the United States and Mexico that is trafficking people. Let's talk about that. Who is becoming a millionaire by taking people to the United States illegally? Because they're going, because there is, uh, they need work. Somebody, and they also need workers. Somebody needs to pick up trash. Somebody needs to do the dishes at restaurants. And it's Central Americans and Mexico. So I think it's time to talk about Donald Trump seriously, in a practical manner, on his terms. He is an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur, and we can uh, and we can do something that is benefit uh, beneficial to both countries. Would you be like Amlo or Lula that travels everywhere? Mix. Uh, I would be amazed. When it's necessary to travel, you travel. Today, it's possible to do video conferences, but uh, to go to the country and be in the country and feel the country is also important. That I'm not going to stay seated here waiting for opportunities. I'm going to go uh, look for them. Concerning the war in Ukraine, would you have a different position concerning the invasion? I say it as a senator openly. Uh, the it's not a war. Russia invaded Ukraine, and we need to condemn that. I'm going to have uh, uh, two ways of uh, uh, dealing with my uh, international policy. One is my values. Uh, and my values are with democracy, with democratic countries, with the countries that protect the human rights. I'm going to condemn dictatorships like Nicaragua, Venezuela, and Cuba uh, without any qualms. And, uh, and, and my other compass is reality. We have uh, 3,150 kilometers border with the United States, 41 uh, border passes, 80% of uh, our exports go to North America. More than 80% of tourism comes from North America. I'm an engineer, I know how to read a map. Uh, Mexico is uh, placed in North America, so for me, it's going to be very, uh, this relationship with the United States is going to be very important due to our rea reality that goes beyond the fact that my heart is with Latin America and we have links like uh, the language and culture that uh, bring us together with Latin America. But as an engineer, I'm very practical. So for you, does Mexico have anything to gain in its position by getting closer to China, or is China not a priority? It's important to dialogue with China, but for me, my priority is where Mexico is located. Mexico 
Mexico is part of North America. I say that today it's a bipolar world because on one pole there's China, on the other pole there's the United States. And that's the reality. And that had not happened since uh, the Berlin Wall fell. We didn't have two uh, such clear poles, but I know where I am located and I know who I want to have commercial uh, dealings. And with Cuba, would you have a relationship? Cuba is distinto. I don't agree with the embargo measures because in the end they harm the Cuban people. One thing is the uh, signal to their presidents, to Canel, to Diaz-Canel, but another thing is the Cuban people. It's the same with the uh, Nicaraguan and Venezuelan people. So uh, I wouldn't do uh, go, go with measures that harm the people, but I will publicly condemn those dictators. Yesterday, we saw the decriminalization of abortion in Mexico. Is this something positive? That's something very positive because the court made it clear what the rights of women are. I want to work in two uh, directions. The women who wish to have their children need to feel supported by the government because it's very easy to, to condemn women when there is no government policy uh, concerning child care, uh, full-time schools, uh, support for uh, working women uh, in order to help their children. The court uh, determined, uh, took its decision. I respect the decision of the court and I will do my work, but I will do my work. If I am the person who I should be, I will support women with everything. It's very possible that Mexico will have a woman as a president. What will this mean? That means that the world will know how a country of this magnitude can be governed with a different vision. Putting at least what I'm going to, to put or would put is uh, my heart in order to put myself in the shoes of other people. No more hate, no more division, but uh, to find a way to, cons to all construct together a better country, something completely different to what this uh, man is doing. He's the government of hate and the government of love. Last question. At Bloomberg, we've had more than a thousand days covering the morning conferences at seven. Will we have to make that same effort with you? No, I don't want uh, to waste my time. When there's something to to when uh, to say, uh, when information to give, uh, and when it will be my role to do it, I will do it. If not, there will be a work uh, re report. But to uh, waste time on that, no. No, there are many problems to be solved, to work on, in order to waste uh, uh, time talking. It's better to solve, 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 and work, work, work. Senadora, muchas gracias por este tiempo para Bloomberg. Gracias.